the name of the Lord. What a joy it is to be with you again. We praise God for his faithfulness, for his loving kindness, for his grace, for his tender mercies, for he is our rock our fortress, our deliverer, our high tower, our healer, oh, and so much more. In fact, he is higher than the highest. Glory be to God. I want to welcome you this evening to our time together of our prayer meeting, the ministry of the word. We're here this evening again to connect, to commit and to commune with him. What a great and mighty God we serve. We want to ask you please to please press that share button, that like it, like it on Facebook and the YouTube, inviting others in, letting them know that something great is going to happen to them because we are connected to the Christ the Son of the living God, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us look to the Lord in prayer, please. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your faithfulness and for your loving kindness. We thank you, O oh Father, that you are our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We praise you for Jesus, that we can come to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus the Christ, asking you, O oh God, to minister unto us. We thank you for for keeping us, for watching over us. Lord, we do not take things for granted, especially in these days, Lord. We thank you that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the covering of the blood of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, my Father. So we pray that as we spend this time together, Lord, that you are going to minister to hearts and lives as only you can by the power of your Holy Spirit. Oh, we send the word to heal and to help and to deliver this evening in the name of Jesus the Christ. We bless you and praise you in the name of the Lord God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Jesus, Jesus, we praise you, we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus.
Alléluia. 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 We praise you. We praise you. Spirit of God, we bless you. Thank you that the letter kills, but you, you Holy Spirit, you give life. Hallelujah. Thank you for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. The same Spirit dwells in us. Thank you for quickening us. Hallelujah. Quickening our spirits, quickening our minds, quickening our bodies. Thank you for healing even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive your healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you with mental challenges, receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you. We bless you. Oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, you call the name Jesus now. Jesus. 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 Call the name Jesus like you believe in Jesus. 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 One more time as we call in that name Jesus. No other name. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are should be blessed be blessed be the name of the Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We want to thank the many of you who have just joined us. We welcome you. We welcome you. Thank you. Hallelujah. For spending this time with us in the presence of the Lord. The Bible tells us in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And while we're on this, I want to give you some numbers that you can call, call, Yes, don't be afraid to call. They'll be happy to pray with you. Intercessors, I thank God for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The numbers are 868-491-2471, and 868-772-7123. The numbers again are that you can call right now, 868-491-2471, Hallelujah. And even if you've given your life to Jesus Christ right now, you can let them know and tell them you need some help. They'll be happy to pray for you. And to counsel you. Praise the name of the Lord. At this time, we want to bring on the servant of the Lord who will come and share as she continues on that powerful teaching, the church, the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. And don't be afraid, send in those requests. We will be praying, we will be believing God with you after the servant of the Lord shares the word. Help me welcome.
this evening, Minister Shirley Ko. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm saying that Jesus would have compulsion, connection, and compassion. When he decided to go through Samaria, it was a compulsion. He had something that he was destined to do. I shared earlier before we were cut off that between the Judea and Galilee was Samaria. And that was only 70 miles. And I have two maps that would have, would have been placed in the comment section that you can always look at after. You can snap it and look at it after. But the Jews had chosen to go through Jericho because they wanted to avoid the Samaritans, which was 108 miles. So they took the longer way just not to have any contact with the Samaritans. So Jesus... He broke the Jewish protocol and he went through. He was compelled to go through Samaria. As he came to Sychar, he was weary from walking, so he sat down at Jacob's well to rest when the Samaritan woman shows up to draw water. And he begins a conversation with her by starting to talk about water. He was making a connection. He asked her for a drink that would make a connection to his real reason for passing through Samaria. He then offers her living water, which was compassion. After she would have shared what he would have heard, he extended compassion. He saw her real need and ministered at that point. Now verse 31 of John chapter four says, his disciples begged him to eat food because remember it's a two and a half day journey but he being driven to do only his father's will responded by saying to them to do the will of his father and to finish it compulsion what was driving him the fact that he wanted to do the will of his father and then in john chapter 4 from verse 39 to 43 after two days of evangelism, many Samaritans believed on him and there was conversion. Mm -hmm. So now we are going to be looking at it. What would make if the, the, when Jesus imparted his gift into the evangelist, I'm going to ask a question. What would make a couple leave the comfort of their home and go to places where there is hardly any comfortable living arrangement? There must be compulsion. Mm -hmm. What would make someone give up their lucrative jobs up for the uncertainties that ministry offers? There must be compassion. What would make an evangelist visit the country area, finds a couple mm -hmm. living in a common law relationship and gets them married at no cost to them till death they parted? It must be compulsion, and that is a true story of Jeremiah Prescott. Have you ever wondered how and why some people find themselves in some places preaching the gospel? Some go where others dare to tread. I will give you some answers based on the impartation the evangelists would have received from Jesus. When Jesus empowered leaders of his church with gifts, entwined in the gifts are the attributes of himself. So for the evangelist, he would have imparted compulsion, connection, and compassion, necessary ingredients for conversion. Number one, the evangelist is driven by his or her love for God and for souls. That's compassion. You, listen, when an evangelist wants to preach, he doesn't have to wait for a mic or for a podium. He would leave where he is and just go and sit among people. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11, and I'm reading this from the New Living Translation. Because we understand our 
fearful responsibility to the Lord. We work hard to persuade others. God knows we are sincere and I hope you know this too. So that's compassion. They want to see others saved. The evangelist is adaptable. Adaptable. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 22. To the weak I became weak, that I might gain the weak. I'm, I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now, becoming all things meets the perspective where they are. That's connection. So if you are talking to a fisherman, you don't come and talk about the, the law. No. You don't come and talk things about the bakery. No. You make a connection. When you are talking to a lady who is sewing, you don't come telling her about what Section 5 and Section 6 says of any any law to be passed in Parliament, if not that they are foolish, but you want to make a connection so you can say, listen, just as you would have been sitting there and doing this great work, do you know that Jesus Christ can do a great work in you? You are making a connection. By all means, does, does what is necessary. By all means, back to the scripture, by all means, I will do whatever it takes to win some. That's compulsion seize the lostness of humanity that they may be saved that's compassion so the evangelist is moving in an adaptable way he's not just fixing one thing his message is not changing but he's adaptable he knows how to meet with kings he knows how to meet with princes he knows how to meet with the vagrant he just knows because he has that impartation the evangelist, however, he understands the wrath of God. Man without Christ is eternally lost. He understands the wrath of God. So 2 Corinthians 5.11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade, we almost beg men that, they, that God will be manifest to them. And I trust also that that and i trust also are made manifest in your consciences so the evangelist compels it's as though i know sometimes you say you can't force your children listen eh? that's very theoretically correct but there are times when you've got to put your foot down i know you can take the all the statements you can take the donkey to the river but you can't make it drink yes take it to the river keep taking it to the river one day he or she the donkey will drink so the, you, you, you persuade him in other words the evangelist does not give up until he would have emptied himself in calling people to christ persuade him then fourthly the evangelist is obedient to the one who sends him or her luke 14 23 the Lord said, I remember when I did the parables, I dealt with this verse. The Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel. That's a strong word. Compulsion. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So if the call is made and the evangelist goes out, he is calling all and sundry. And if you don't want to come, I'm telling you, you need to get in there. This is urgent. The evangelist operates with a sense of urgency. 1 Corinthians 9.16 tells us, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory, for necessity is laid upon me. You see, we need to understand, money can't do this. Money cannot do this. Sometimes we in our small minds, we think they're preaching for money. Let's get that out of our minds. There is a compulsion. There is a compassion that drives the evangelist to places that you and I will not go. I'm telling you, I am a little bit scared of flying for too long. So there are some places I may never go. If it's the Lord, he's going to make a way to make me tolerate that. But there are people who will just get up because they have under compulsion what about jeremiah jeremiah says in jeremiah 27 to 9 he said he cried out to god he said lord you have deceived me mm -hmm. that's a strong thing to tell the lord yes. from verse 20 from sorry jeremiah 20 from verse 7 to 9 he said god i talk to these people all the time you have deceived me and they're not changing they are mocking me now every day i'm in derision you read it 
they are mocking me since i spake and i cried out i cried violence and spoil because the word of the lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily then i said i will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name in other words god are fed up i talk to them and tell me tongue tired i cry you know he was a weeping prophet right i cry i preach i talk a child a persuade a compel and now they come back and they are ill speaking me they are reproaching me i am preaching in your name again but what happened then i said i will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name but but his word was in my heart as a fire burning and it shot up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay but I had to get the word of compulsion mm -hmm. when that word is in you it must go out because you are being stirred by the Holy Ghost every evangelist that is called to this office is oh. at his or her best when the message is delivered you know um, this fellow called Jonah Jonah had a message to go and preach eh? and he was uneasy he tried to get away he tried but he still knew that God was a gracious God mm -hmm. he knew the people were bad and he knew that if God saved them they would think he was a false prophet but still when God delivered him from that fish he went out and he gave that word because he was under he was under command compulsion mm -hmm. every evangelist there is an urgency that propels their move in proclaiming this glorious gospel yeah. there is an urgency it's not you see we sometimes we live life eh? and we live it so casually that I know the church was shaken into a little shock this week or a big shock you could say because we have seen the brevity of life we have seen how we could be here today and not here tomorrow and so the evangelist he preaches with an urgency as if today was the last day and the preacher is preaching his last sermon come on Noah is telling the people get into the ark and that's the urgency that the evangelists speak with but how should the evangelists function in the church remember its function in the church how like the other gifts the evangelist must work along with the appointed leader of the congregation especially if he or she is not the leader there are times when we are blessed to have an evangelist as the leader as i propose we have at semi so you find every message it does not matter what our pastor preaches he gives an altar call I remember when we were in a former church, he preached on the year 2000, that coming over from 1999 to 2000. And he made an altar call. I was wondering, what is he made in an altar call to? And did somebody get saved? Yes. And he's still in the church today serving. Doesn't matter what the evangelist preaches, that need for somebody to give their lives to the Lord is always there. 1 Corinthians 12, 24 and 25 tells us, just as we treat the other members for our comely parts have no need but god has tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked that there be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another so we should not underestimate or downplay or treat less the evangelists the strange thing about the church today though is that there is room for the apostle there's room for the prophet there's room for the pastor and the teacher but we have reduced the importance of the evangelist i'm saying that again we have reduced the importance of the evangelist to the point that some people even say the days of evangelism are over well if the days of evangelism are over as we know it I say the days for sinning is over. These are all gifts and should be honored as such. 
every gift is pivotal to the function of the church in carrying out the great commission nobody can do this alone Amen. nobody remember these leaders prepares the church to do the work of ministry so we must honor and treasure the evangelists as they are pivotal in bringing matthew 28 19 and 20 to life how should the evangelist edify the church he trains the body to evangelize by imparting what he or she has received second timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who will also teach others so in other words everyone is trained to win the lost so i'm committing to faithful people and the faithful people will commit to faithful people and we're gonna have a multiplication effect a multiplying effect whereas if i do it i bring one person and next week i bring one and i'm adding but if i invest in you and you invest in somebody else and we keep going we will have multiplication the evangelist prepares the body of christ to bring in the end time harvest and for exponential growth growth this i will explain next week please god because we need the evangelist we're gonna he is going to be the person he or she to bring in the end time harvest because the church doesn't grow from transfers the church grows from birth and i'm going to get into that a little deeper next week please go on the church does not grow remember the church is a called out people so if you were living in curep and then you moved to to barakpur the church didn't grow you transfer your membership because you have relocated but the church is still the same size but when the evangelist goes out and get some people who have never trusted Jesus, the church grows. And that is why the church is not confined to the location. But the church is a body of people that has been called from darkness to light. So the church doesn't grow from transfers. Membership grows, but the church doesn't grow from transfers. The church needs the evangelist. Amen. So we're going to pick this up next week. Please go on. I want to thank you for listening today. But before I leave. I'm offering you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. Yes. One of these fine days, yes, yes. it will be the last day. Mm -hmm. It will be the last call. It will be the last chance. Don't chance it. Christ is building his church and he wants you to be a part of it. And for the believer who maybe you know you, you know you're saved but you're not you're not hot we're going to get later on into that i want to encourage us because life is so fragile let's get on fire for god i want to see when those church doors open every single one of us yeah. find ourselves in the house of god i'm begging you we don't need a holiday we've had it Amen. we don't need an excuse we've had it let's just throw everything down and get urgent with the message of christ as you come in we are refilled we are taught and then we are equipped to go out so believers you are challenged today but for those of you who do not know jesus pastor pope is coming now and he's going to lead you because he is anointed for this I share the word. But if you want to accept Jesus and be a part of this church, he's going to give you that opportunity now. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Minister Shirin Pope. We bless God for you and for the insight that God has given unto you to present this so simple yet profound yes we want to ask of you you've never trusted him as your savior and lord you've heard it is time except we repent we shall all likewise perish 
Would you say after me, please? Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Thank you for hearing your word. I need you as my savior. So thank you for saving me now and writing my name in your book of life. Amen. Simple prayer comes from the heart. It is a prayer of faith. So let me help to strengthen what you've prayed about and prayed for. So, Father, now we want to thank you for the many who have surrendered to your Lordship tonight. We pray in Jesus' name that you would continue to strengthen with might by your Spirit in the inner man. Oh, God, that the revelation as to who you are and your coming and the fact that you're coming again for a prepared people. May this be cemented in the hearts and lives of the hearers. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for those who are coming, who've come into the family of God even now. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. And oh God, we continue to lift up the many who are not well in body. Oh God, we pray that the healing power of God will come upon them now. We curse infirmities, we curse sicknesses, we curse diseases, we curse pains, we curse cancer cells. In the name of Jesus, we curse lumps, we curse tumors in the name of Jesus the Christ. And we loose God's healing power from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet now in the name of Jesus the Christ. Father, you promised to do it. For you said to call upon you and you would answer us and show us great and mighty things that we know not of. So, oh God, thank you for intervening in the name of Jesus the Christ. Oh God, we continue to lift up nations and in particular this time Trinidad and Tobago. Oh God, the, 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 we repent today of, of, of our lethargic spirit and at times oh God we take so many things for granted so many of your blessings for granted oh my father we are asking oh God that you are going to touch our leaders in the name of Jesus our president our prime minister the leader of the opposition the, the parliamentary Oh God, in Jesus' name, those in our regional corporations, oh God, we pray for those in our healthcare system, oh minister unto them, those in the, in the economy, God, for the economy, minister unto them, in the name of Jesus, the education system, 
minister by your grace and by your power in the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the undergirding, for you are able, well able. Hallelujah. This is why we call upon you for your divine intervention in the affairs of our land, Trinidad and Tobago. And oh God, we pray for wisdom, for leadership, especially our prime minister. Oh God, as he seeks to, to, to reopen some of the uh, systems, some of the uh, places, some of the sectors, oh God, we pray in Jesus' name that we in turn will cooperate, do our Heart. We understand that, Lord, as we, as we do the right thing, God, we are going to benefit. However, we continue to curse the virus from its root in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus the Christ, oh God, and we pray your ongoing protection protection upon us hallelujah in particular every believer hallelujah blessed be the wonderful name of the lord we thank you for the blood of jesus christ for the word declares they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony so we bless your holy name father for hearing and answering us in the name of jesus the christ lord we continue to pray for the church that we will continue to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might we will put on the whole arm of god hallelujah so we're able to stand against the wiles of the wicked one and seek to do your will i pray for every leader the apostle that the the, the prophet the evangelist the pastor the teacher oh god that we will commit ourselves to building the body in the name of jesus to do the work of ministry so be thou glorified as we continue god to, to show and to declare that you are indeed the christ the son of the living god and you're alive and alive forevermore we bless you and praise you hallelujah hallelujah blessed be the wonderful name of the lord Glory, glory, glory. Well, we continue to uh, give you, we want to give you these numbers again that you can call 868-491-2471, Hallelujah. We want to let you know also that the office is open, the church office is open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for this time, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we continue to receive the, yes, we're still available to receive the hampers. We continue to help those coming off the street. They keep calling on us. Thank you for your ongoing support. Thank you for your ongoing support in the giving, the tithes of your tithes and the offerings and the special offerings, especially for the media um, sessions, the, the, the media programs that, that is of the broadcasting and the publishing, the television program, uh, the radio program. We need your ongoing financial support. Yes, this is our means of getting the word of God out. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world as a witness unto all 
and then shall the end come. So thank you for your ongoing support. Maybe you want to sponsor a month uh, of the way a month a program radio or month program television. Please let us know. You can call one eight six eight six six two four zero four seven eight six eight six six three nine two two one and let them know that you want to do something god is speaking to you thank you in advance and for those of you who um as you continue to give you can go online there's a number that i want to give to you again that number is three five zero one zero one six eight three three zero one that is the number that you can go um, uh, online and uh, uh, deposit, make that deposit to any Republic Bank, 350-101-683-301. Thank you very much for your ongoing support. And I know that we continue to sorrow um, you know, for the loss of our dear sister, the Reverend Lystra Henry. And um, we will, please keep, you can keep calling the church. We will give you an update as soon as we get more word. We will let you know. So please stay in touch. We want to thank God. I mean, she lived, she served the Lord. She was very, very instrumental and impacting in, in what she did hallelujah we thank god having done her part done her, the service of the lord yes we bless god and this should be uh this should cause us to want to do our part for his honor and his glory so stay tuned you can call the office um, uh, wednesday or friday and of course, check the uh, social media platforms of our church and you will get the necessary information. Well, we thank God for this time together, even though at the beginning with the technology, we had some glitches, but to God be the glory. Well, until we meet again, remember on Sunday morning, watch the program, at, uh, the television program on CCN TV 6, 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. And of course, remember on Sunday morning too, it's the first Sunday, so it's communion again. We want to be connecting again at 9.30 a.m. for a time of praise and worship and the word. So until we meet again, also on Thursday morning, we are on I-95.5 FM from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. And we'll be having a special program because certainly we want to highlight the work of our sister, Reverend Lystra Henry. And we will be having some persons on the air which would they will be speaking and we also have someone to share the word of almighty god so we're looking forward for thursday morning god's willing